on this episode of Conversations with Rich Bennett. I had a client, she was uh, trying to get in shape, lose body fat, gain muscle. It's all the, the typical things for why people usually work with a fitness professional. So got her on a workout program, got her on a meal plan. And so she cleaned up her diet. She exercised, started losing weight, um, certainly eating healthier. While she was in this process, I had a connection. This is when I lived up north with a mm-hmm. physician up there that did custom vitamins based on blood work. Uh, very similar to what I'm doing now. So Wow. Um, yeah, so she linked up with her. And so we ended up having her on these custom vitamins, nutrition, exercise. And she and her husband had been trying to have kids for years and years and years. They'd been married. They'd been through multiple rounds of IVF and not successful. They completely gave up on conceiving on their own. Very emotional. And so they even adopted. And their, their son was a few months old when they found out that they were expecting Coming to you from the Freedom Federal Credit Union Studios, Harford County Living presents Conversations with Rich Bennett. Come on, you're faster than me. Guys, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, you already on. said it. I was going to ask her if she remembered the date. My guest today is a leading expert in corporate fitness and wellness, boasting over two decades of experience helping high-powered business owners and executives transform their health and productivity. Utilizing her vast experience in the fitness industry and pre-med clinical knowledge, she designs unique, tailor-made fitness programs that have helped some of the world's top business leaders achieve their fitness goals. In addition to her fitness career, She's a successful entrepreneur and the CEO of Lettuce Meal Prep, a thriving government contracting business. Beyond her fitness and entrepreneurial pursuits, this blows me away. She is also a classically trained cellist and has performed with the Fredericksburg Symphony Orchestra. It is a pleasure to have on Sarah Bennett. Thank you for having me, Rich. Oh, my pleasure. (laughs) Cellist? How? Yeah. All right, that's my first question. How do you go from being a classically trained cellist mm-hmm. to a fitness instructor? Well, yeah. So my both of my parents are music majors from oh. Shenandoah University when it was a conservatory for music. Okay. And so my mom is a flautist and my dad mm. is a trumpet player. He actually... A retired sergeant major in the army for uh, playing for the army band. Nice. Yeah. So he's amazing. Both of them are amazing musicians. So I grew up with this rich, you know, music. They expected all of us to play instruments. I'm the four right. little kids. <laughs> and so my siblings played, you know, wind and brass instruments. And by the time I came along, they were like, oh, wow, you hear that cello? It's beautiful. It you is. know. God. So it's really their fault that I'm playing. <laughs> so you're still playing, right? I, I still do play. I don't play as often. I, I actually couldn't renew my contract with the Fredericksburg Symphony Orchestra just because I, uh, with my pre-med and everything else I'm going right. through, it was just too many uh, irons in the pot, so to speak. So um, eventually one day I want to get back to it. Um, Wendy Zevin's my, uh, one of my private teachers. She's actually mm-hmm. a Juilliard uh, graduate and she plays for the New York uh, Philharmonic. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. That I, I'm the cellist is or the cello has always amazed me. Um, it's just one of those instruments that to me, when you listen to some of these people play, it has like several different ranges that you would never think of. Yeah. Yeah. It's used in a lot of different pieces, whether it's classical oh, yeah. or rock or whatever, because of that reason. Yep. Yeah. I, I, and I think the first time that I really fell in love with it, um, well, I always liked it, but then okay, I'm going to forget the name. It was a group of guys, mm-hmm. um, Apocalyptica. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, mm-hmm. And I saw them perform in Metallica. I'm like, no way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's surprising. Uh, yes. Very. Mm-hmm. Which of course then turned to me. I was like, then I got to do research and went to Yo-Yo Ma, which is amazing. It, yeah. It's like, oh God. I'm mm-hmm. going to tell my son, drop the guitar and pick up the cello. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to convince, I have two kids, so I tried to convince them, but uh, one went into trumpet and then the other is just, you know, she's an athlete and that's, that's her thing. So, <laughs> Well, I was going to say, all right, so in school, 
In high school, because I know high school, usually they give you one of two options. You can either do band or chorus mm -hmm. or sports. Yeah. So what did you do? I take it you did band in high school? So, yeah, it was, it was orchestra. So, okay, yeah, they had uh, band geek and orc dorks for what we were called. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I never heard that term. Oh, yeah. Orc, yeah. Wait, Very orc dorks? Okay. Orc dork, yep. <laughs> God. <laughs> So you did orchestra. I did orchestra. Yep. So, but not a band geek. <laughs> God. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I did orchestra, and you're right. Once you get to a certain level, you really have to choose. And mm -hmm. so, uh, I did choose orchestra instead of uh, s school sports. As right. at that point, I did still do year round swimming. So, oh, yeah, I was on a year round swim team. That was a awful schedule. I didn't have any time for much anything else between. The two between cello and then also school, I mean, uh, between the cello and right. the swimming. So, yeah. So competition swimming. Yeah. Yeah. Travel. Oh, yeah. That schedule is nasty. Very early meets. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, were you, was your dream then to try to be in the Olympics? I, yeah. I think every kid at one point, yeah, like, yeah you know. <laughs> It's like, I want to be better than Michael Phelps, right? Oh, right. My my dad, actually, because he was a Herald Trump and he was a section leader. So he went to the Olympics when it was in the States. And uh, he, you know, the, the mm -hmm. intro. Um, so when he went there, he actually brought me back a one of the uh, starter jackets were popular then for swimming. Right. I kind of, then it was Olympic. I was like, well, maybe I'll be there one day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, because now this is what you do, fitness. Right. So can you walk us through your journey from a fitness professional mm -hmm. to a corporate fitness contractor? Because there is a difference, right? Uh, there is a difference. So one is, uh, you know, you meet a trainer how many ever days per week in person mm -hmm. and uh, the fitness consulting or contractor, you can kind of intermix the two is it's for a term period of time and it's constant accountability. And no matter whether someone is at their local living place, wherever that is in the world or traveling right. abroad, they have constant support and accountability. The best way I can liken it is, you know, the rock, for example, yeah. he has, he has a, a trainer that he works with, but it's not a fixed session that he has. He has an entire program that allows him to plan for these movies and get in phenomenal shape, but it's very, very concise programming that he's able to follow from a distance. Right. Yeah. So what actually motivated you to transition into the role? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so what happened was I, I've been training for so many years, right? Uh -huh. So what happened is a lot of my clientele, because of being in the D.C. area, it's such a transient area. We're traveling constantly and they were gone more than they were present. So they'd miss a lot of their training sessions and then there would be this void in accountability while they were gone. Right. So, um, what really pulled the trigger to go to more of this consulting accountability and programming, meal planning, all that stuff was over COVID because that definitely put everybody hundred percent online. Yeah. And I was, I was the biggest person. I was against it. I was like, I hate this. I like my paper files. I like my stopwatch and whistle and right. you know, not, not yelling at people, <laughs> but you know, keeping them motivated and accountable and, but then when I upgraded my software during COVID to be able to still support my clients and keep them in great shape throughout that, I was like, I love this. This is actually even better because even no matter where they're at, what they're doing, they don't have to fix their schedule into mine. Right. They don't have to fall off track when they're traveling. They can have constant support and I can change their programming on the spot whenever they're grounded because the, the uh, plane got weather grounded or whether mm -hmm. they're having a shift in business meetings. It's just, or the, even if they're doing personal travel, it's just amazing. So I've transitioned because of COVID. And then also a lot of my clientele ended up being the business owner, executive CEO, very high profile clients. A lot of them, I can't even say their name because they've asked me not to, Right. <laughs> but, and I respect that, but yeah, it's just uh, the word of mouth of them getting good results and they know other people in that industry. So my clientele and niche is really that now with the consulting format. Yeah, I, I guess Zoom became your best friend, didn't it? But in a way, in a way, it, I did that for a while. But even Zoom, people were like, I have to schedule that, right? Yeah. And these people were just so, you know, my clients are so busy. 
that I now it's an app integration. So I still have that personal communication with them, but I don't even have to have Zoom workouts with them even. Okay. Yeah. I, so with your client, because you, I mean, you've worked with a diverse range of clients. Yeah. Miss mm-hmm. America 2010, mm-hmm. a United States Air Force Brigadier General. Yep. Uh, CEOs. So how do you adapt your approach to meet each client's unique needs? I actually love that. That's one of my favorite parts of working with such a diverse amount of uh, individuals who are at the top right. of the game. They're all at the top of the game of what they do. Uh, because I get, it's like a new thing every single time that I program it for them. Um, so each, you know, the Brigadier General versus Miss America versus all these other different individuals I've worked with, they, they all need something that's very unique for them. Mm-hmm. So I actually really enjoy that. It's not a cookie cutter program that way. Everybody's, you know, goals are different. So yeah, I just, uh, with the, the app, I can customize the workouts for what they individually need, even their right. medical limitations, all that stuff. And then even for meal planning, whether it's logging meals, whether it's following a strict meal plan, whether it's connecting them with a personal chef, or whether it's them traveling and taking photos of their meals and and that uploading in my app. And it creates this beautiful data analytics that allows me to predict whether they're going to be successful with their goals or not. All right. Because I'm, I, that just blows me away because, like, working out with a Miss America and a Brigadier General has got to be totally different. It's a shift. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially, well, we know how the military is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The officers, maybe not so much. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I, can, I can say that now. I'm no longer in. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but can you actually share a specific instance? Mm-hmm. Uh where you help the high profile client overcome a significant fitness challenge? Yeah. So one of them, actually speaking of military, um, he was the first amputee that I ever worked with. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Combat vet stepped on, you know, right. explosive and yeah. So wow. yeah, that was very interesting. Cause they, I mean, he obviously has to have specific type of workouts. So we yeah. were able, it's, it's something that you can never follow a fixed cookie cutter, even an app that you're like, Oh, let me follow this workout because it might not work for him. So yeah, customizing it for someone like that was very unique. Wow. Yeah. So, and I take it, they, he approached you. So that was another word of mouth. Okay. <laughs> he actually was working for someone who um, was an executive who worked right. for one of my business owner clients who actually owns an international, uh, ironically, a fitness franchise. So yeah, he ha- happened to be in the, flew into the area to see that that local franchise. Mm-hmm. And this is when I had in-person sessions and I met him that way and uh, we just had a really great connection. And so started working with him as well. Yep. Uh, now is he your first and only one amputee amputee yes yes mm-hmm. so, i mean I, I i'm sorry that just that just blows me away because uh, <laughs> i just had a um a company you know that does the prosthetics and somebody that is does the therapy for them yeah and it's amazing to watch these people uh still they don't give up Mm-hmm. They still want to exercise, but how in the world do you adapt to that? Because if you're used to working with, well, let's people with both limbs. Yeah. All, yeah. all their limbs. I guess I said both because your arms, are, but how do you, I, I'm just, that's amazing. I don't, I'm sorry. That just, I didn't know that. That just blew me away. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, so obviously certain exercises are limited, but he, he's able to use a prosthetic during the workout. Right. So there, okay. I mean, squats are still possible and, and things like that, but you know, like walking lunges, not so much. It, so it's, it's some customization, but I mean, he w- is an amazing athlete and super strong. He actually made the Paralympics for hockey. Nice. So very, very fit individual. So I think that was a huge advantage for him anyways, is that yes, there were some limitations, but yet yeah, he's just a very strong willed, athletically fit person. Um, he's very smart too. So he's, he's able to take uh, and understand things very quickly because he right. actually graduated, graduated a valedictorian of his university and very smart, very physically capable person just had an, you know, very unfortunate thing happen. Um, but yeah. he's been able to use that as a catalyst to overcome things. So, yeah. So, so has, has the VA contacted you? 
About yeah, so it's a people? question I get all the time. Okay. <laughs> I, you know, it's, I, I, I've mentioned this before that um, on other podcasts that the Brigadier General that I work with, um, she's actually one of them too. She actually had me uh, CC her in an email to the VA because they're actually opening a large uh, facility locally. I don't know oh, if you really? heard about that in Virginia area. Yeah. Oh, no, and I didn't so that. just she's, you know, she and other people have been like between your fitness background, your rich military history and your government contracting. I think that the VA would be a really excellent fit. And honestly, it would be um, not just work for me. It would be also something I would be very passionate about because of those elements being intertwined right. into one service. Yep. Wow. That's awesome. So in your experience, because I mean, it's like, the guy with the prosthetic they didn't even phase you um uh, but, but what are some of the unique challenges faced by business leaders when it right. comes to health and fitness time mm-hmm. yeah yeah it, that's really why i created the methodology that i have right now because with the way i have it set up the entire method it's actually four different pillars that i walk everybody through Okay. Um, so yeah, it's in it because I have so many military clients, it's actually ready, aim, fire, align. So I love that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, ready, you, can, you can tell somebody in your family was <laughs> definitely in the military. <laughs> yeah. I, and I didn't serve just to be clear. I did not serve, right. but well, it's, it's kind of my way of giving back, you know, and, and well, thank you for that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so the, the ready, aim, fire, align. The ready is goal setting, and it's very unique. I've actually tied in a lot of the clinicals and lab education that I have from pre-med into that. It's better mm-hmm. better analysis of someone's entire whole health. It's not just a medical history or goal setting that I take someone through. It's looking into intrinsic and external factors that affect their goals. And honestly, business, with all the business courses I've taken and economics, uh, it has that intertwined with the goal setting, too. So it allows them right. to take in factors of, of what would create a business to be successful, which actually helps create a person to be successful with fitness, too. So, so that's ready. Aim is where someone is getting their nutrition aligned. And that's different for everybody. I have not everybody's on the same plan or same system, it's unique because my, my clients who are uh, healthcare workers are mm-hmm. going to usually do better with maybe something that's an intermittent fasting based model because they work 12 hour shifts versus someone who's in the office all day who can have more freedom or especially working at home. But so that the ready is the nutrition elements. And I, I do have a personal chef option for that people who, who don't want any, <laughs> any kind of shopping, cooking, preparing. Um, but even, even with that, I can, and I have done um, master classes for this to teach people how to prep for an entire week, six meals per day in less than 10 minutes. So, which is possible. Wow. It is possible. Macronutrients, calories, micronutrient, uh, sorry, nutrient timing is all factored into that. So to support muscle growth and fat loss. So, and then the aim Ready, aim, uh, fire is all about firing up your metabolism and your workouts. And I have for the aim and the fire, a timekeeper portion of that, which is answering your time question. Okay. The it's allowing people who are busy executives and business owners, because they struggle so much with having that time and they value it so much that it allows them to actually add back time to their week. So with a timekeeper nutrition, for example, you can either prepare your meals in 10 minutes or less, have a personal chef, or even have your personal assistant help with it. And so that all the food worrying and preparing and ordering that you do throughout the week is completely uh, wiped out and, and given back to you. So that wow. adds time back to your schedule. And then for the aim, <laughs> for the exercise element, they can or incorporate timers throughout their workday so they can actually work through their workouts, which sounds a little strange. <laughs> Or they can actually use timers while they're um, traveling, whether they're using an airport uh, gym or whether they're at a different location so that they can be very efficient with their workouts. And Interesting. So that's time. So so working through someone's workday, for example, I actually do this all the time. Um, when right. I have a really busy day, I'm like, I don't have time to work out. I have all this work. Well, I'm going to work through my workout. So I set a 30-second timer where I lift, which a 30 seconds about 10, 15 reps. And then I'll set a two to three minute timer where I'm going through, you know, looking through proposals, going through my emails, I'm reaching out to clients. And then that, I mean, the timer hits, I'm lifting again, and I go right back to my computer. I'm actually more productive that way because I'm constantly moving. And so I'm more alert. Right. 
So, so you're doing the cardio at the same time. Or you can be on your treadmill desk. Yeah. Right. Tre- yep. Treadmill desk. Yep. <laughs> it sounds awful, but it's like if you go at a two mile an hour pace, it's barely even noticeable. So a two two mile hour pace for two hours burns about 500 calories. That's about a pound a week you're giving up for doing work that you'd be doing anyways. So, yeah. Yeah, but you just said something, and I've never seen one, and I don't think there is one. I think you need to invent it and get the patent for it. What's a that? Tre- a treadmill desk. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you think about it. You look at the va- the raisin desks so people can stand up and mm-hmm. work. Mm-hmm. Why not take a treadmill and turn it into a desk? <laughs> yeah, they have attachments to go on the treadmill or a treadmill to go under the desk, but they don't have like Oh, get out of here. Treadmill desk, yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. I, apparently, I got to do more stuff than just going outside and walking, don't I? <laughs> well, Jeez. see, that takes time from your day, unless you just really enjoy it. But, yeah. I, it, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I just can't. Uh, it's <laughs> talking about time. Because I've been getting so busy, I haven't been able to walk as much. Mm-hmm. Although, a day like today, mm-hmm. you know, when I think they said the feel like temperature is going to be 100, mm-hmm. I would not go outside and walk. Right. Oh, yeah. I'd be getting on the elliptical or something. Oh, yeah. You'd... You know, forget yep. that. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. So, with your workouts, is it mainly weights? So, or what is you... it a combination of stuff? Like, okay. So, for instance, because mm-hmm. um, at one point I was up, I was at 300 pounds. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, um, and, and everything I did, I was having a hard time losing that weight. Mm hmm. And then I found out about DDP yoga. Don't know, know if you ever heard of that. Um, I've actually not. Okay. Diamond Dallas Page is a wrestler. Oh, or, okay. or, 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 or was there, And he does this yoga. He doesn't lift weights or anything. Hmm. And I started doing that and I lost 50 pounds. Yeah. Um, the amazing thing was, oh my God, I could actually bend over and touch my toes mm-hmm. and everything and um, felt good. And then, of course, I messed up my back. Mm-hmm. So I got to get back to doing that. Yeah. Um, but I didn't do the weights or anything because I found out when I sh- was working out with weights, I messed up mm-hmm. my shoulder and it was hard yeah. to lift a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, now, since I'm, I'm going to the chiropractor, I just haven't tried the weights again because in all honesty, I, I'm nervous about that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, do you, do you incorporate different types of exercises, whether it be, um, Weights, yoga, anything for cardio or, or anything like that. Because I know everybody's different. Yep, yep. That's exactly how I was going to answer, actually, is everybody's different. So mm-hmm. it just really depends on my clients. And that's really why I have this new method set up, because it really combs through what exactly someone needs in that ready portion of the goal setting and medical right. history. So I know by the time we get to the aim and fire and alignment, what that person needs for their exercise programming. So yeah, if someone is like, I have, so I won't name names for privacy, but I have one client. Right. Um, he's uh, has rotator cuff issues, low back issues. Ooh. He's a former um, Ironman athlete and marathon runner, and so his he's in his mid fifties, his very very worn out joints from all that. Yeah, and so uh, he thought he could never <laughs> bench press for the rest of his life, do another pull up, squat, S- sit ups were tough on his back. Yeah. So uh, when I first started working with him, it was it was very limited on what his joints would be able to tolerate to help get them stronger again and actually mobile Mm -hmm. um, and working through them being worn out. Right. So that was a lot of uh, mobility type work, Um, not even doing sit ups yet. That wasn't even possible. More like planks um, and, and standing core exercises. So eventually, even for, for him alone, that his program, even though he's the same person, changed. And we've been working together three, four years now. And now he can do uh, 10 unassisted pull-ups. He can do sit-ups again. He can do push-ups. He can do uh, squats, deadlifts, all those things. So we are very careful with his programming still. But uh, it just depends on someone's limitations. And even with right. that, it might not always be that way. So, yeah, it really depends on the person, nice. what I do strength weights or body weight yeah okay actually i gotta ask you this real quick because i thought i saw a report uh-huh. maybe last year or whatever something about one of the exercises that the military was thinking about changing oh okay and, and i hope it 
I, 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 it, you know how these things go. Probably just a rumor. Mm-hmm. Uh, but supposedly they were switching. They were getting rid of push-ups and doing planks because planks is I, better. I've heard that, and it's not anything I've seen yet because okay. I, I have helped. Um, actually, I don't think I've ever posted any testimonials. This I need to, though. Of, uh, of <laughs> yeah. clients, clients I've helped who've uh, wanted to go through their um, testing for MEPS and everything to get into mm-hmm. Um, Some of them aren't able to pass their military testing for that. So I've actually had people hire me to help them get fit and their weight down to be able to go through and pass MEPS training. And that's, it has changed. Their fitness requirements has changed over the years. So yeah, I'm not sure where that's at right now because I haven't had someone for that in a little bit. So now, all right. So the fitness part, because that's, you you have two businesses, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what's the fitness part called? The name of the business? Imagine you fit. Imagine you fit. Correct. Yeah. And what's the website for that? Imagineyoufit.com. Which is easy. Yeah. So, uh, now, the other one, which is the meal prep, lettuce yeah. meal prep. Mm-hmm. I, lo- I love that. Thank uh, you. I, I do, because it, it just hit me. At first, when I first read it, lettuce meal prep, prep mm-hmm. it just sounds like the vegetable. But then yeah. when you say it fast, it's like, you know, let us. Let us, yeah. Meal prep. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> um, but you yeah. had that before um, the other one, right? Or did yeah. you? Have, which one did you have first? Let's I had from... Imagine You Fit. Um, okay. So I started fitness in 2001. I, I branched off into my own Imagine You Fit in 2008. And okay. Lettuce oh, wow. Meal Prep started in 2016. 2016. Okay, right. so what prompted you to start Lettuce Meal Prep? God, I'm just I'm going to say <laughs> that all day now. Uh, what what prompted you to start that? And what gaps does it feel, fill in the market? So in 2015, 16, I did, uh, so I do bodybuilding competitions on occasion and I don't really post much about it just because it's not for me. It's for me knowing the ropes so I can better help other people. Right. So, yeah. So I did a competition then and my, my clients were seeing how I was meal prepping and they were like, oh my gosh, this is so much better than anything you can get from a national brands that you order to your house or pick up at the store. So if I paid you, would you meal prep for me also? Because you your meals look so much better (laughs) and i i really enjoy cooking so um i I, yeah i really got into my meal prep i did meal prep sundays it's like the one time a week i'd have drinks so i'd have it'd be like this whole like meal prep party for me and you know have my drinks and meal prep and it was fun so um my my clients asked me to meal prep for them so i had to look into all the legalities behind that and honestly a lot of people like why aren't there more healthy meal companies out there because it's a lot to get set up you have to and it depends on the state. Right. You have to get a commercial kitchen. You have to get all these different things. You have to get your serve safe certification to make sure that you're not going to hurt people <laughs> with mm-hmm. the way that you prepare your foods. And, and again, each state's different, but for Virginia, all those things were necessary. And so um, I did all that and I, I launched my company and it was more for ordering. So then it was order Monday by midnight. You'll have your foods delivered to your either your house by Friday or... Or you can go to a pickup location where, which were multiple CrossFit boxes and nutrition stores locally. Uh, so I created relationships with those facilities and, and then um, it eventually became this personal chef option because people would be like, Oh, I have shellfish allergies or I have high mm. cholesterol. I can't have sodium. Um, I, the sushi bowl had too much ginger, but yet someone said it didn't have enough ginger, you know, like, so, and I always had five-star reviews, but people just wanted to have a little bit more customization. And so I thought, you know, there's, there's a lot of meal prep companies out there, but there's a real need for having actual customization as personal training and fitnesses that I'm doing in, in the food realm. So that's shifted to, yeah. This episode is brought to you by the victory team the answer to what's been missing in Maryland's real estate market. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think of real estate, the words authentic and empathetic don't typically come to mind. That was until I heard about the Victory Team. You see, founder Daniel McGee saw the lack of authenticity and empathy in the local real estate market and thought, enough's enough. So he assembled a crack team of the best real estate agents around and decided to shake things up. Now, you may be asking yourself, how in the world did he do that? Well, by slashing the burdensome fees while simultaneously amplifying the level of service. But it's not just about giving you an unforgettable experience or saving you money. 
The Victory Team is all about building relationships that go beyond just a single transaction. You see, the Victory Team believes in victory at every level, business and personal. They're all full-time agents working as one cohesive unit, committed to ensuring your deal closes victoriously. They're here to help you get the most profit with the least stress possible. And trust me, in the world of real estate, that's a huge win. But wait, (laughs) there's more. See, this isn't just a business for them. It's about giving back to the local community they serve. It's the spirit of community, the spirit of victory that really sets the victory team apart. So whether you're buying or selling, think victory. Visit the victory team today for a real estate experience like no other. Because with them, every deal is a victory. Give them a call at 410-652-6003. Again, that's 410-652-6003. Or you can visit them at housesinharfordcounty.com. Again, that's housesinharfordcounty.com. So with the food prep, is it um, because I know some people have to be gluten-free. Yep. Some are vegan. Yep. Some want their meat. So, I mean, is it a combination of everything or is it like everything. one particular? Really? Everything's factored. Yeah, that's that's how it is now. It wasn't then because, you know, the chicken's all made. It's like 20 plus pounds of chicken made all at once. You know, it's and it's hundreds, hundreds of meals. That, so you can't you can't individually take the seasoning off or whatever. Well, it is that they, uh, yeah. <laughs> so. People like, so anyways, that's why I change it over. So for example, a personal chef customer that I have right now, husband and wife, the wife is pretty much pescatarian. She, she even eats um, the fish products very, very rarely. And she's very particular on that very low mercury fish. Okay. And vegetarian. Um, she wants to have a certain type of food, like uh, a tofu once a week, veggie burger once a week fish a specific kind of fish once a week you know and it's dictated in, in veggies with that very low carb yet the husband is on more of a bodybuilding diet so he wants high protein also a lot right. of vegetables a little bit lower carb but enough to fuel his workout so their meals are completely different yet it's the same chef preparing it that would never be possible with a, a national brand yet. wow so when you when it comes to especially the fish part mm-hmm. um how do you I mean, are there like certain fish that you will not include in it? I will include any fish. But it's really up to the customer. So, for okay. example, she doesn't eat swordfish because it's higher in mercury. Really? Yeah. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> so, has anybody requested snakehead fish yet? <laughs> no, but that would be very challenging to get. <laughs> Actually, I may not. They're starting to carry it in a lot of the seafood markets now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and oh, still yeah. one of the one of the best fish I ever had yet. That's so interesting. I had a client. He, she loves going to um, South Carolina for their alligator. Oh yeah. Oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love gator. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's, God, yeah. now, why, why, here we go with food again. I always. Why did I have you come on before lunchtime to record? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And I think I know your answer to this one, Uh Uh, but how do you balance your career as a corporate fitness contractor Mm -hmm. with the responsibilities as the CEO Mm -hmm. of lettuce meal prep? So for the government contracting, that is really my main focus right now. So for the lettuce meal prep, I'm, I rarely have to go to my kitchen anymore. Um, as much as I do love preparing foods, I don't anymore. It's my, my personal chefs that do that. And, okay. and I pair I pair them up with the customers and to make sure that they have a really good relationship. So their their communication, that prep, everything, the cooking is between them. And so I I step in when I need to to help facilitate recommendations. For example, if, you know what what fish yeah. have higher mercury or should I be having soy more than multiple you know once a week or what would that do? I heard about estrogen. Like I can answer all those questions, but um, the personal chef is in charge of the food, so I don't have as much. Um, involvement with that so i can really focus on the government contracting which is my main the government contracting and then the corporate fitness is my my main focus right now so uh yeah the contracts i i won my first prime contract this past uh, january so that was exciting 
Nice. And so I'm going after my next one. Yep. All right. So with that, and I didn't even think about this because with, and I have a friend of mine, actually a couple friends of mine that are like you with the woman owned business. Yep. yep. Um, and, and that's what you, you are a woman owned business, right? Correct. Yeah. I'm okay. the sole, sole founder, sole owner. Yep. Okay. Cause I mean, it wasn't, was that a struggle to get that certification? So that's pending and it. Yes. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I know been, you got to jump through hoops and fire. It seems like it's, it's challenging. I feel like government contracting, they weed out the, the people who aren't hardworking through the application processes, Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I have submitted it and I'm just waiting and it takes, you know, sometimes months to hear back. So yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. So with your feel with the fitness, are there a lot of other fitness instructors going after these government contracts? That's a good question. I haven't seen as much of that. I feel like a lot of people are in the realm of like IT, cybersecurity right. and construction. No. And even the food element, I, there's just not, there's not as much competition as you'd think out there. Okay. Yeah. So you almost have, well, like your own niche for it. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and it's, um, I mean, when you go to a restaurant, usually it's mostly women staff there, right? Mm -hmm. But as you go up the corporate ladder, it really diminishes the amount of, of women, especially in ownership, um, right. that you'll find. And so that's uh, that has shifted and gotten better over the years. Uh, but yeah, it, it is definitely more rare. There's been plenty of uh, meetings, networking meetings that I'm the only female in the room, especially really? when been for like something, you know, there's a facility that opened recently for packaging. It's somewhat local that I went to just to see how they, they go through the packaging process. And I was definitely the only woman there. So <laughs> yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what, if you don't mind, what's the process of going through, trying to get these government contracts? Cause I know, and the only reason I asked that because there are some people, not just women that want to get into that, Yeah. but they don't real. there's a, and correct me if I'm wrong. There's a lot of stress with that. Isn't there? Yeah. So once you get, <laughs> Through the fact that you're going to bang your head against a brick wall like numerous times. Right. Okay. Then, then you're like, oh, okay, this is normal. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, yeah, everybody goes through that. They're like, it's unnecessarily difficult, but it is. And so you just right. have to kind of put your head down and, and, and grind, grind through it and just expect that you're going to have hurdles and hoops and brick walls constantly as you're trying to pursue it and know that's normal. And just find your way to navigate through that because it's very, um, I, I've said this before, uh, people view government contracting as a web. It's very mm -hmm. intricate, intertwined, kind of messy, a little unclear. Not messy, but it's just, it's so vast. So, right. but I view it as a scavenger hunt. So like you can't see point A to point Z at all. Right. You, you get little clues along the way. So you, and each person's different and my clues that I got are going to be different from someone else. So you just have to be very proactive and, you know, I, I joined the SBDC. I joined PTAC. PTAC is a, a person who actually assists, you know, PTAC or. Yeah, I've heard of it before. Yep. So your PTAC will actually be like your advocate for you getting uh, set up and running. Um, my PTAC that I had uh, allowed me to know about networking events. So I went to one at the Kennedy Center for meeting these huge government agencies and huge businesses, as well as ones that were smaller and just shaking hands, getting your capability statement, getting your capability statements important. People need to know what kind of work you do. Right. Uh, there's a lot of different steps, but um, yeah, there's, there's different resources between PTAC, SBDC. I'm part of the DC woman Owned business center. And also I'm, I'm really a big advocate of GovCon giants. They release podcasts often for government contracting and oh, I was going to say that sounds familiar, but it's right because it's on your LinkedIn profile. Yep, yep. yep. <laughs> That's why I said it familiar. Okay. Yeah, it's just because contracting changes all the time. So yeah. what was true two years ago is not true today well, and, and for some things, for some right. things. So like their policies, the percentage of designations that go towards woman-owned, veteran-owned, dis mm -hmm. disabled, like all that's changed over the years. Um, even SAM, SAM.gov is where you go for federal contracts. And that used to be FedBiz Ops and all these different uh, compartments that they made into one website. So even that was a different element a few years ago. So it's just constantly changing and very intricate. But I, th I think wow. the ones who really win the contracts and survive are the ones that adapt easily and mm -hmm. are very headstrong to get through those roadblocks. So is there any advice that somebody gave you when you were going for these 
government contracts that, in other words, the advice they gave, like, you needed this, you needed that, and come to find out you didn't need all that? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so, for example, uh, I was waiting to bid on my first, for a prime contract, um, just because I was waiting on my woman-owned, and I, my, right. my kitchen's actually in a hub zone, which is another designation. And so I thought I needed all these things to be able to bid on my contract. And so um, actually through reading different books and, and listening to podcasts and um, a few of my clients are contractors too. So they actually kind of gave me their opinions on everything. So right. they said, just go for it. Like if anything, you'll learn from it, but just go after a contract. And uh, while you're waiting, a lot of people stall too much. And so I did. And the first contract I ever bid on, I actually won. <laughs> so seriously <laughs> yeah yeah very wow. rare like i don't know anybody else who's that happened to so that's yeah. awesome yeah that it was my first awesome. contract that i ever bid on and it was for 1.5 million nutrition school bags for a nutrition center yeah and wow. it, was, it was full and open and against a preferred brand competitor and so I knew I was going head to get head against a larger company that was actually it was listed on the the rfp brand or equivalent Right. So uh, I reached out to that brand and they said, oh, we were actually bidding on the same contract, but would like to do business together in the future. So I almost gave up on it. But then I was like, mm, I'll, I'll see if I can find better pricing. I And I did and bid on it and actually won. So that was really amazing. Nice. Yep. No, have you ever thought about writing a book about all this that you do? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I would be interested in writing a book about the fitness because I feel like I have a very unique pr perspective and I have, I mean, a hell of a lot of experience. So, right. yeah. Yeah. I think you should. Yeah. I, it's, it's just an added benefit that, that, you know, for your clients. Especially, yeah. A book that would be geared towards the executive and business owner. I think that would mm -hmm. be very beneficial because a lot of them, gosh, they're just so heavily focused on their business and growth and just being everything at once that they neglect their health and fitness. So, Yep. So if another woman wants to get, you know, her woman, uh, woman owned small business. Right? There you go. Yep. Yeah. W woman -O -O owned small business. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, any advice? What advice would you give them? To get their woman owned? Yeah. Yep. So you just, you go online. It's an application process. Just make sure you have all of your documents between creating your business and also your records of being in business. In one mm -hmm. place. <laughs> once the nice thing is, once you go through the process of one certification and create a folder for that, you can easily reference it for everything else. So just it's just the first time you go through it, you kind of have to be like, oh wow, I I don't know quite where that document is, but I know I have it. Right. But you have it in that same hub, and then you can pull pull from it for uh, for easy applications for other certifications because there's okay. quite a bit out there. So, what advice would you actually give to other professionals? looking to transition from a specialized field into becoming an entrepreneur. Okay. So like working nine to five and then going into being an entrepreneur yeah, that kind my, of situation. Yeah. Be ready to work longer. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Be ready to give up your nine to five to work 24 seven. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I mean, just, okay. So I, I'll use one client again, not naming names, for example. Right. Uh, she worked for, as a nine to five, no, not nine to five. I mean, she worked more than that sometimes. I, sh I don't want to say that because certainly people work beyond their hours at times. So, but she was an employee for, for years and years and years, decades. Mm -hmm. And she, um, she retired and now she's an entrepreneur. And it's just this different thing because you have to constantly have this concern of like, what am I doing? Am I doing enough? And, you know, so and she's never had to, to deal with that. So it's, it's great because she has all this freedom, right? Right. But, but it's really a little bit more stressful because you have to worry about things to, you always have to keep pushing the ball, so to speak. Otherwise it's going to stop. So I would recommend that just make sure you're set up for success. If you're transitioning, make sure you have everything lined up, mm -hmm. but then also know if you have it all lined up, it's not all going to be the way you think it is <laughs> because you think you got it right, but it's not going to be right. So no. <laughs> <laughs> not always. Yeah. Um, and then and, and expect that sometimes you give 0% effort and you get 200% back. Sometimes right. you give 5,000% effort and you get 0% back. So 
you just kind of evens out yeah. <laughs> over time. But yeah, just make sure you're set up for success um, and always be networking. That's super important because uh, you usually can have synergy with someone somehow and help support their business and just grow through through that as well. But yeah, it's just a very, very challenging transition. Yeah. Like my client's going through, but she set herself up for success, made sure she had a decent amount in savings just in case it doesn't go as planned and uh, just have a very good outline for the day. Like I time block my entire day to make sure that I am reaching my goals within that, that daytime period. Otherwise things are going to just get, keep, keep getting pushed off because you don't have anybody over you telling you, Hey, this is due today. So right. yeah. You, you've mentioned networking a few times yeah. um, mm-hmm. and you and I would not have hooked up if it hooked up. Okay. We're not dating. You and, <laughs> you and I would not have linked up. Oh, Okay, I like that. Linked up if it wasn't for LinkedIn. There you go, yep. <laughs> uh, but what's been your, I guess, your most successful way of networking? Uh, my most successful way of, of networking? Oh, that's a good question because I, there's like so many different ways that you can. Oh, I know. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. Um, I would say going to events. Like I'm okay. very big and it's been a little weird since COVID. But I love going to continuing education courses. I love, so for fitness, I would I'd go to a lot of, because I have to get continuing education to get my recertifications, right. which you certainly can do online, but I always opted for in-person to meet people. Mm-hmm. And so I love networking in, in person for any kind of events. So whether it's fitness and for government contracting, I know I can, I can email people, you know, these, even the VA, I can, I can email right. different agencies. But it is so much more meaningful to actually meet someone face to face and actually get to know them and, and hear their story, tell your story and be like, how's the synergy and versus a, an email. So LinkedIn is amazing. I love it for that. Yes. But I think the in-person is is even better if you can. Yeah. <laughs> We're fortunate to live in the D.C. area. So um, that it's uh, it's just very, very nice to meet people face to face. So I, I think that's the best. Well, and I think, because in all honesty, a lot of my networking, like mm-hmm. if I go to a ball game, yeah, um, grocery shopping or whatever, mm-hmm. I, I just love talking to people and that's networking. And I don't think a lot of people realize that, yeah, yeah. that they can do that. Mm-hmm. They just want to, you know, let's just get in there and get out. Mm-hmm. You know, be nice, talk to people. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> if anything, it can help you. So uh, how do you actually see the corporate wellness industry evolving in the next five to 10 years? I see it growing because there's a a huge awareness. Um, Mm -hmm. And I, I, if you've been on my LinkedIn, maybe you've seen this about uh, lifestyle medicine. That is one thing that, yeah, it's, it's something that's kind of new. Okay. Um, So a lot of people are like, why, why when I go to, you know, fitness facilities or even healthcare professionals, um, especially healthcare professionals is the, a lot of the, you know, social elements, your sleep, um, the, not just exercise and nutrition, but all these other elements that play into your overall health. Why is mm-hmm. that not talked about more? So I feel like that's going to rise up more and people are going to do more telehealth because of that. And that's going to help people be more accountable as we keep traveling and, and the, you know, barriers of being in one place get dissolved a little bit more. Unless we have another out, like crisis, hopefully, thank God. Yeah. We, hopefully, we don't. But yeah, I just think it's going to keep growing, and that that lifestyle medicine is going to keep kind of integrating, which is what I'm a big advocate with. Again, the methods I'm going through to help p- support people not just with their exercise, nutrition, but make sure all elements. Um, like for example, I'm I'm partnered with a lab that does biomarker testing. So people can get blood work done so they know exactly what's going on for them personally. So like, for example, I talked to one of my clients today. She was like, I know I'm supposed to be taking calcium because I'm in my 60s. Right. But like how much? Like what does your body uniquely need? Take take a multivitamin. But what like do you need all those things for you personally? Are you in, in deficits or excess of things? So the labs test up to 77 biomarkers and let someone know. If their magnesium lows, if their thyroid's a little off, if their uh, metabolism is a little bit wonky right now, um, their their B vitamins, like all these things, it helps them be able to better uh, not only change their lifestyle to support it, but then also take 
multivitamins to help right. as well. So yeah, I see all that growing because it's just a lot more customized to the person versus just, you know, plug into what, what, what used to exist. Uh, like a curves, like, <laughs> like a circuit, like something oh, wow. very generic. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Interesting. You mentioned the biomarkers. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause I just had somebody on from the Michael J Fox foundation and we were oh, talking okay. about yeah. Parkinson's research yeah. and we were talking about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but have you actually ever worked with anybody with Parkinson's yet? No, I have not. My, my grandfather had Parkinson's when I, I was growing up. Oh, okay. Like later in my t- early teens. But besides that, no, I personally not have had a client who's had Parkinson's. Okay. Cause I know exercise helps them a lot, especially boxing. Yeah. It helps yeah. out with it a lot. Keeps them moving. Um, yeah. Now with everything you do with all the, you know, the high stress, uh, people that you have worked with the individuals Mm -hmm. is there a go-to stress management advice or or, or that you use for them yeah so it's a combination of things so again that's the whole health approach that i take with my methods so with uh the ready aim pillar right so Mm -hmm. nutrition making sure that people are eating a well-balanced diet like food is chemistry and so that affects how you feel it affects your moods and they've, I mean, I feel like most people know now that a lot of the uh, receptors for mood and feeling is actually in our gut versus our brain. So um, what we have for foods affects our moods and chemistry because mm-hmm. of, of that. So, so nutrition, um, the biomarker testing, knowing what they're deficient in, creating supplements for that. Um, so that will help mood and health uh, and energy and all that. Uh, also there's sleep. Sleep is very underrated and especially for busy business owners and executives because they like, you know, I'll sleep when I'm dead kind of mentality. Yeah. And <laughs> it, uh, for diseases like not, not Parkinson's, but Alzheimer's, all that is mm-hmm. exasperated by lack of sleep. And there's a lot more studies going on that show that they call it sleep hygiene is just so important to make sure that your overall health, that you're not, um, well, obviously mood and irritability increases if you're lack of sleep, but, right. but not just that, but your, um, your DNA actually can get triggered to express negative genes <laughs> if you're not taking care of yourself well enough. So we wow. all have things in our genetic codes that might not get expressed because of the way our lifestyle is. But if we have poor nutrition, poor lack of sleep, poor exercise, then we might trigger these negative things in our genes to express. So, yeah. All right, because I mentioned the book. Do you do you actually go out and speak to groups as well? I not as much anymore. I am speaking next month for something. Okay, but it's not as uh, you know what what it is. I've been asked, and I'm into it, but but I'm a little concerned because I've seen clients who travel all the time speaking. One of them, for example, he travels over five million uh, miles so far for yeah flights and it's i see how it wears and tears and so that makes me a little nervous <laughs> but yeah i've thought about wow. it so actually where's your furthest your furthest client at uh, no, are, you, are you strictly huh what <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah netherlands netherlands yeah all right well then that answers my next question you'll work with anybody anywhere yeah, my okay. <laughs> my method and my software allows for that. Yep. Okay. Good. Time zones might be a little weird, but yeah. <laughs> so, what do you consider your throughout all this your greatest achievement? And you know what? Yeah, throughout all this, because I don't want to say throughout your life, because this is your greatest achievement. I would think throughout life. Right. Uh, but what do you consider your greatest achievement, and why? So, in in general, like. Anything? No, I can't say in general because correct me if I'm wrong. You have two kids, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, so you know, no. <laughs> we don't want to hear that. In your okay, in your career, what do you consider your greatest achievement and why? Hmm. Oh gosh, that's a good question. There's like so many things that come to mind, um, so it's hard to to, to pick. Um, I'm trying to think about my favorite like t- client testimonial story. Okay, I got one. I got one. Okay. Yeah. So it's, and I, I don't, I still, I might change my mind on this. This this is the greatest, but it's one that I felt like was like just monumental. So, um, I had a client, she was, uh, trying to get in shape, lose body fat, gain muscles, all the the typical things for why people usually work with a fitness professional. So 
got her on a workout program, got her on a meal plan, meat and potatoes, Idaho girl, you know. <laughs> and so she cleaned up her diet. She exercised, started losing weight, um, certainly eating healthier. And um, so she, uh, while she was in this process, I had a connection. This is when I lived up north with a mm -hmm. physician up there that did custom vitamins based on blood work. Uh, very similar to what I'm doing now. So, wow. um, yeah, so she linked up with her. And so we ended up um, having her on these custom vitamins, nutrition, exercise. And she and her husband had been trying to have kids for years and years and years. They'd been married. They'd been through multiple rounds of IVF. Right. And not successful. So they completely gave up on conceiving on their own. Very emotional. Very expensive. Wow. <laughs> And so they even adopted and their, their son was a few months old when they found out that they were expecting. And so wow, he was like, she went to her doctor. She said, I don't understand because we've tried and tried and tried. We tried naturally, right. we tried multiple rounds of IVF without success. And we've uh, adopted, we thought we couldn't. And why, when we weren't even doing anything to try, did I all, all of a sudden conceive? And so the doctor said, it has to be, a combination of your exercise, nutrition, and having these vitamins that are custom for your biology and what your body was deficient in to be able to be healthy enough to, to bear a child. So she had a successful pregnancy deliver, and she has two kids of her own with the adopted children that she has as well. So that was my favorite story because wow. it was a huge testament of if you get your exercise, nutrition, and even having this bio, biological um, biomarker matching vitamins to what you uniquely need, how well your body functions <laughs> to the point yeah. that, and not that I want people to go out and be like, Oh no, that sounds horrible. I don't want to get pregnant, you know, <laughs> but, but <laughs> you know, our bodies on a cellular level could be functioning so much better and we don't even know it. Yeah. So yeah. Probably wow. my favorite story. All right. So two last things. Mm -hmm. Well, number one, Remind everybody again, their web, your websites, sites, I like that, um, and how they can get in touch with you, mm -hmm. you know, social media, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So my my website for my fitness consulting is imagineyoufit.com, and then for nutrition, it's lettucemealprep.com. So, and that's L-E-T-T-U-C-E mealprep.com. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Love it. Um, so last question, because you said you've been on other podcasts already. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, what kind of dog, first of all? Oh, they're they're husky and they're, they're oh. a mix, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love huskies. Yeah. Um, yep. So last say, since you've been on all these different podcasts and I'm sure interviews, uh -huh. is there anything that somebody has never asked you uh -huh. that you wish they would have asked you? And if not, is there anything you would like to tell the listeners? Um, I don't think there's anything that I've thought, oh, I wish I would have been asked that. So I appreciate right. that. Like, I, I could put in like a plug if, if I really felt it. But no, <laughs> no, I, don't, I can't think of anything. You've been great for questions. Um, as far as for the listeners, um, for anyone who is that busy business owner executive, just know that you don't have to be feeling poorly. You don't have to be stressed out with time. You can actually be super successful with reaching your fitness goals and being completely successful and even growing your business in the midst of it. So don't, don't think that there's this one or the other. You can have both. You can have it all. <laughs> yeah. Love it, Sarah. Thank you so much. Um, it, it's been a real joy. And actually when, once we're finished, there's something else I, um, want to offer to you. Okay. Okay. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Please check out the show notes for all the relevant links for my guests. All you have to do is go to conversationswithrichbennett.com and you'll see the show notes in this episode. And if you can, please leave a review for the podcast as well. Meanwhile, check out the trailer for this podcast that I highly recommend. My name is Eric Coffey. Let me introduce you to my new podcast, GovCon Science. The show where I discuss all things federal contracting from those who know it best. The idea is to provide insights and perspectives from people who eat, sleep, and basically poop government contracting. With each episode, I want you, the audience, to take from it practical steps, insight, or knowledge that you can add to your arsenal to become better, stronger, more confident at attacking this sector. Basically, I want you to win. When times are good, you can make money doing almost anything. Amazon selling, eBay, retail arbitrage, Shopify. It's when the tides turn that the government is the only source 
who consistently would bring back the economy from the dead. The year is 2007, and real estate was at its peak. Everyone I knew was in a real estate craze. They simply put down a deposit, signed a contract, and before the home was finished, had a contract to resell the house. Some called it flipping, but really, this was not investing. This was high-stakes gambling. And we all realized that in 2008, when everything came crashing down, banks stopped lending, large brokerage houses start closing, and the tsunami could be felt across the world. But just a year earlier, I'd actually changed my business from real estate to the government market. Call it sheer luck or incredible timing. But while all those people were suffering great losses, I was experiencing tremendous success. Everyone around me was crashing and burning, and my newly found construction company was thriving. We were hiring people, subcontracting out projects, and traveling on exotic vacations. In fact, our previous employer tried getting on board, doing a joint venture with our little company to try and get a piece of the government pie. It was a crazy turn of events as the student became the teacher. And just as quickly as their school board contracts dried up, they eventually closed the dismantled $50 million firm. Now, fast forward 10 years later, my ups and downs of working in the government marketplace proved valuable as I go on to launch my YouTube channel, Score Contracts, a channel dedicated to teaching the world all things federal contracting with hundreds of videos online and thousands of people taught. I share my ideas and concepts I've learned over the past 12 years, working on military bases and government installations around the country. And now I want to share this with you. From the 1930s to today, the federal government has injected capital and contracts into the market throughout every recession, depression, and market swing. Like any other sector in the world, the U.S. federal government has lasted centuries, remains tried and true, standing through the test of time. If you want to learn how others are growing their businesses using the power of the federal behemoth, and you can too, then make sure you stay tuned. The plan is released one episode per week, each Tuesday from now until as far as I can see. If you like what you hear, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, and give us a five-star rating. This will only help us to become more attractive to well-known contributors. As the community grows, so will the people who can attract to be on our show. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you in episode 001. I want to share an amazing experience I had with Tar Hill Construction Group when I needed to install a new roof on my home. Let me tell you, they are truly a cut above the rest. Tar Hill Construction Group is an award-winning residential and commercial roofing and exteriors contractor, focusing on roofing, siding, gutters, and solar solutions. Proudly serving Baltimore, Harford, and Cecil counties, they make it their priority to make a positive impact in the communities they serve first while providing exceptional services in roofing and exteriors. From start to finish, Tar Heel Construction Group proved to be a reputable and dependable contracted solution. Their quality installations and good communication kept me informed and reassured throughout the entire process. It's no wonder they have been voted Harford's Best Roofing Contractor and Best Home Improvement Contractor for three years running. But here's what really impressed me. Tar Heel Construction Group's commitment to continued service and registered warranties. They stand behind their work, ensuring that I have peace of mind for years to come. What's even more remarkable is their dedication to giving back to the community. They aggressively support, and uplift the neighborhoods they serve, making a positive difference in people's lives. I feel incredibly grateful and humbled to have chosen Tar Hill Construction Group for my roof. They have earned my trust and respect for being the only contractor to be voted Harford's Best Roofing Contractor and Baltimore's Best Roofing Contractor in the same year. So if you're looking for top-notch roofing and exterior solutions, look no further than Tar Hill Construction Group. Visit their website at tarheelconstructiongroup.com or give them a call at 410-638-7021. Again, that's 410-638-7021. Experience the excellence and community impact for yourself. Tar Heel Construction Group, building excellence one roof at a time.